This is a Kirby Heritage 2. Um, we're going to show you how to replace the belts on it. Now, obviously this one has the cord and the handle and everything taken off. You don't have to do that. Uh, we're just in the process of kind of restoring this or refurbishing it so that we got it kind of tore down. But you want to put your wheels in the highest position so there's a gap under here. Because when the front comes off, you got to kind of tilt it forward. So you need that clearance. First, you open up your, your headlight cover. And this on the front rotates. It does say belt on, belt off up here. The belt is resting on a shaft that sticks out from the motor. So it's under tension. So when you turn this to belt off... What you are doing is taking that tension off that shaft. There's a hook in there that rotates, captures the belt, and lifts it up so it's no longer on that shaft. This here, you rotate counterclockwise, and it'll come right off the front like that. If you look in there, this one's a little rusty, but you can see that belt around that hook. And that's what's happening when you turn it. Now, you have your lock and unlock. You're going to move these to the unlock position. And that will let you take off your, your floor plate. Or sole plate. Um, before you do that though, and this is what's different about the Heritage versus like your generation ones. You have to turn this to get that tension or that belt off that hook. That was getting a little stubborn. So now, if we look in there, that belt is no longer around that hook. Now we can take our floor plate off. And this is why we had to do, take the tension off first before we took off the sole plate. On the Heritage models, the belt sits in tabs that are attached to the sole plate. Where on your generation models and your newer models, the beater bar rests on tabs that are inside the front housing. So, for here you just kind of release the tension, just kind of pull that tab back a little bit. And it'll slide right out. And you can slide the belt off where now if your belt was broken obviously you don't have to take the belt off and you'll slide it back on and this is when you want to take the time to clean out any gunk and hair that's around like your bearings and that because that'll that can burn out your your bearings now when you line it up on your sole plate You want to make sure the belt is in line with this wider strip here. You're just going to push the beater bar in so it's in that tab. Um, you want the screw head facing the sole plate. Because what that is once it snaps in there, just like that, that screw, you can use that to raise and lower your beater bar, your brushes. So if you screw that in tighter, it's going to push your brushes out. Or if you loosen this, it's going to pull the brushes up. The 
with your belt in the middle, you're going to slide it back in, hit it backwards, little hooks or tabs go in the slots. Make sure your brush is there, your belt is in there. Um, you're going to move these back to the lock position. Then making sure that your belt is still centered there and not like just bunched up like in the corner. You should be able to turn this counterclockwise again. And that hook should have that belt captured. Reassembly, you, these little notches here will rest on these tabs here so you kind of put at an angle to get the the shaft in there and then you just kind of hold it up with one finger and then turn this back clockwise so now the the front is on attached again turn this back clockwise this time and you're done So a couple different steps than your newer, like generation, you know, up through your, your current ones, um, generation 10s and 3s and your uh, Sentras and stuff like that. But the overall principle is basically the same. You just, the only real difference is you have to take the tension off the belt before you take the sole plate off because it comes out in one, one assembly.